Hi, this is Stefan from Conductor. And in this lecture, we're going to have a look at the Kafka Consumer Groups CLI, because in this lecture, we're going to see how we can reset, delete, and so on, manage these consumer groups. So we've seen in the previous lecture that we had multiple consumer groups reading from the same topic. It was possible. And we've also shown that consumer groups can within spread the reads. So this makes sense. So in this lecture, we're going to list the existing consumer groups. We're going to describe one consumer group, and then we're going to delete a consumer group. So let's get started. So let's open this file named for consumer groups and we'll have a look at the Kafka consumer groups CLI. So again, as usual, the documentation can be done by entering the command itself. And so the first thing we're going to do is list all our consumer groups. So as you can see in here, we have two consumer groups, my first application and my second application. But this is something you can do visually as well. Here you can see I have my first application and my second application in the conductor platform. So this is the whole purpose of having a UI is to save a bit of commands. So what happens if we describe one specific group? So let's go ahead and describe the group called my second application. And I'm going to fold this a little bit. And as we can see here, we see that my second application is reading from the topic third topic, partition zero, and that the current offset is 14 and the log end offset is also 14. And therefore the lag is zero. So that means that my consumer group has fully caught up with my topic. But we can see these numbers changing and you can get the same kind of information by clicking on uh, my second application and get some details here, okay? But so if we uh, want to create a console producer, so let's go and recreate our producer. So Kafka console producer. And we produce to the third topic. And I just send A, B, C, D, E. Okay. So this has sent more messages into my topic. And this will have created some lag for my existing customer, uh, consumer group. So if I run this command right now and look at the output, as we can see now, the log end offset is 16 and 14 and 27. So on three different partitions. And we have a current offset committed of 14, 13, and 25. And therefore, the lag is 2 one and two. So there has been some lag for my consumer group now because messages have been produced, but not yet consumed and committed. So now if I stop this console producer and I start a console consumer again on my second application, what we expect is that we will be reading five messages because that's what the lag was. So we see these five messages right here. And if I leave the consumer running and do a describe again of my consumer group, as we can see, the lag is now zero, but there's been some data. So the consumer ID has been now filled, and this is very, very long, but as you can see, this console consumer right here is consuming these three partitions. And this is something you can also see in UI settings. So if you refresh this page and look at this one, so as we can see, we can see that this console consumer right here has been assigned from this host, these three partitions. So this helps, this makes sense. And what happens if you start another console consumer? So let's start another one on the same group. Uh, this is a consumer group command. So no, let's start a console consumer. Here we go. So now we have two consumers as part of the same group. And if I do a consumer group CLI, as we can see in here, you will see it. So partition zero has ID B46, partition one has ID B46, and partition two has ID FA1. So that means that this consumer FA1, this new one, is consuming partition 2, whereas this consumer right here, B46, has partition 0 and partition 1 assigned to it. And this is why we see messages being spread out between different consumers when we read. And this is again a behavior you will see by going into the UI. Now we can see two different consumers with two different IDs are consuming different sets of partitions. So that's a pretty cool thing to demonstrate. And now we understand why things are happening and how we can describe what is happening. So one last behavior I want to show you is that when you start a console consumer, but you don't describe a group. So in this example, I'm going to have a console consumer. But in this command right here, I use the topic third topic from the beginning, but I don't specify a group ID. So my console consumer is actually going to read all of my topic. This is expected. And now if we do a... Uh, consumer groups command, but we are going to do a list to list all the existing consumer groups. As we'll see, we'll find console consumers in there. 
So these groups are here for a little bit of time, but after a while, they're going to be removed because they are temporary consumer groups. But just so you know, this is the kind of output you would expect uh, when you're using consumer groups on the console with that group IDs. But they're temporary ones, and after a while, they will be gone. So do not leverage these consumer group IDs. Always, when you want to consume a topic, leverage the consumer groups you have predefined. Okay? So that's it for this lecture. I hope you liked it, and I will see you in the next lecture.